Hello, this is His Word and Mayo. Thanks so much for joining me today. We are getting into Luke's account of the resurrection of Jesus. So we have hit um, in Matthew and in Mark, and now we are in Luke. We're going to walk, walk this same story out, yet in a different account, in a different way, with a few more details thrown in. Going to be beautiful, giving us every reason in the world to praise, to rejoice, to celebrate, to shout for joy. Let's go through. Let's grab a hold of truth. Let's see what God has for us. Super excited knowing that today we're hitting Luke. Our next video, we're hitting two chapters in John, going through the same account of what we're hitting today. And after tomorrow's video, we will have completed the gospel. So the first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So we're coming up to the end with that, knowing that, understanding that it is just the beginning. But being able to look back and knowing that we walked through, that we journeyed through so much of just these moments and these opportunities of drawing close to the Lord. All that he taught us, all that he showed us, all that we have stored up within us because we read with purpose. Because we read in a way where all that we did read, we're keeping close to our heart. We're holding on to that truth and remaining in it. So that when we need it, when times arise and come up and these, these hardships happen and we're faced with so much that we have so much truth hidden within our heart as we are hiding God's word in our heart. There's power in that. Like this is a real thing that, that comes pouring out in the most beautiful, empowering way because of his spirit, because of the helper that we have it has been given to us that that when we need it the most this truth will come alive that this truth will drive us into victory because his word is alive and active in our lives and as we choose to seek the lord and stand on his truth and read with that kind of purpose then again like i always say crazy beautiful things happen so let's let those things happen today let's get into this chapter in Luke, the very last chapter, so Luke chapter 24, is what we're hitting today. So get away with the Lord right now. You and him, make that connection. Just sit with him in his presence. Read through and read through thoroughly. Read through like you want something to happen. Like, like you're just awaiting change. That you want to learn. That you just want to glean from the Lord. You want to soak up everything that he speaks to you. Read in a way that you know there's something more than just face value than just what you're reading to just, you know, in just reading. There's more. There's so much more. And read in that way that you know that, that you're assured of that, that there's hope in this, and that Father desires to unveil that to us. So let's go. Let's go after his heart with all that we are seeking, with everything in us, believing that when we do that, we will find him. He will unveil himself to us and that truth will change us and that truth will set us free. So Luke chapter 24, do your thing, sit with the Lord, and, and we'll walk this chapter out together. <sighs> Father, do what you always do. We just ask that you meet with us, that you just keep on speaking and keep on moving and make us fully aware of your voice and of your movement and of your heart, of, of what you desire to do with us, in us, through us. Lord, we love you, and we are here today positioning ourselves to praise you, to just say thank you, to allow everything that's going on, or everything that we think, or that we have known, or that we have learned, we're just allowing that to decrease, believing that there's so much more, and there's a newness that you have for us right now as we walk through this chapter. Lord, we love you. We, we give this to you. We give these moments completely to you, asking you to take complete control. You are in control, but make us aware of how you are in control and we give you permission to just take over, to lead this wherever and however it needs to be. Lord, this cannot be about us. This cannot be about me. This cannot be about our own strength. This has got to be about you. We are desperate for you to show up and to take over. Lord, just flex your muscles and show us how big and great you are. We want more of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Luke chapter 24. We're getting to it. Okay, but on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. 
So in Matthew and Mark, we read about the women running to the tomb, bringing these spices to the tomb. Um, in Mark, in, in the last... Um, our last video we hit in both of these passages, we read about even that on their way to the tomb, they're like, okay, how in the world are we going to roll this tomb away? How in the world are we going to get to Jesus? And they got there. When they got there, they realized that the tomb was already rolled away. God makes a way. He always does. And as we move forward with just the desires of our heart and just saying, here's what I'm here for. Here's my goal. Here's my purpose. This is why I'm doing this to just get close to the Lord not to glorify ourselves, not to feel good about ourselves, not to appear righteous or, or wonderful or whatever it is, but our goal and just to get close to the Lord. That's it. Just to know him more, to go deeper, to get to him. And these women discussing this and get there and they see that the stone was rolled away. We see that same, um, that same verse, that same understanding in verse two. Verse three, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. So they see the tomb, the stone rolled away. They, they peek in and they're like, but Jesus isn't here. We see that it's open, but Jesus is not there. The body of Jesus was not there. Verse four, while they were perplexed about this, behold, two men suddenly stood near them in dazzling clothes. Then it says the women were terrified, bowed their faces to the ground, and the men say, so mentions men, but these are angels in dazzling clothes. These are two angels that are sitting there, and they ask this, love their question in verse 5. Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is alive. He is living. He is not dead. Why are you seeking the living in a tomb? Why are you seeking the living in a place where the dead would be? Then they continue, as we read in Matthew and Mark, he is not here, he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee. The angels speak this to the women. Um, Matthew chapter 17, verse 22, has that conversation where Jesus spoke this to them and said, here's what's going to happen. The Son of Man is going to be given over. He's going to be crucified. He is going to be put to death, sentenced to death, but he will rise again. And the angels are saying, remember, he spoke all this to you. Keep these words that he has spoken. Keep them in your heart. Remember what he said, because what he says, it will be fulfilled. And look, it's been fulfilled. He is risen. He is not here. Then he continues on in verses seven um, in saying that, that this is what he said. Remember what he said? He said that the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. He's saying, think about what day this is. This is the third day. And what did he say? That he would rise again. Well, guess what? He's not here. He has risen. Then in verse eight, they remembered his words. When we remain close to Jesus, when we continue in our pursuit of him, then what he spoke maybe years earlier, we remember them. As we remain near to the Lord, as we keep going after more of his heart, then as we walk with him, as we journey on through, as we do life with him, with that kind of closeness, with that kind of intimacy and that kind of pursuit, then in that we remember, oh my goodness, remembering this, that this is happening. Remember what Jesus said. Remember what, what Jesus told me back here. Remember what he showed me. Remember what the Lord allowed to happen, that time of suffering and what he showed me in that and what he did in all of this. It comes to light. It is revealed as we continue walking faithfully in the Lord. And it says they remembered his words. Verse nine, they retu returned from the tomb and reported all these things to the 11 and to all the rest. And it explains the women that were there, including Mary Magdalene, Verse 11 says, but these words appeared to them as nonsense and they would not believe them. So as they ran back and told them to the apostles and to so many others, they thought it was nonsense. They did not believe what they were saying, that Christ had risen from the dead. Verse 12, but Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen wrappings only, and he went away to his home, marveling at what had happened. So he's only seeing the linens, these wrappings that were once around Jesus, but he did not see the body of Jesus. Love that Peter is thrown into this. I love that it mentions that so many didn't believe, but Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb. Peter wanted to see. Now, there's this very special place that Peter has in this whole story. 
Peter was the one who denied Jesus. That this goes way back, and we're going to hit a lot more of Peter um, in our next video as talking and walking through the account of John. But but this is special with Peter. Peter denied Jesus. Peter was the one who spoke up and said, "Hey, though everyone's gonna, gonna going to deny you, going to run away from you, I will not deny you." Even if it means death for me, I won't deny you. And Peter just speaking out and placing himself above all the apostles. And yet he was the one who denied Jesus, not once, but three times. So when Jesus, in, in this account of the resurrection of Jesus, Peter has a very significant, a very special, a very intimate part in positioning in this story and in, in dealing with these emotions and and a lot of restoration that needs to take place in Peter, um, but how it brings him to and into such authority with Jesus and sharing in his glory and this baton being passed off to him. Just beautiful. This whole understanding of Peter and, and his part of this. But we see that he jumps up, he runs to the tomb, and he sees linens, the wrappings only, not the body of Jesus. Then verse 13, And behold, two of them, so two of the men, two of the disciples, were going that very day to a village named Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. It says that they were talking to each other about all these things. So about Jesus' life, his crucifixion, um, this talk of the resurrection of what what all was happening, what the women said, what now, um, you know, th this talk of, of and with Peter, just all that's taking place, the life, crucifixion, the resurrection. Then it says in verse 15, while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself, the risen Lord, Jesus himself in physical body form, not as a spirit, not as, you know, this isn't an angel. This isn't just one speaking of it. This is Jesus himself in, in resurrected form as a physical body. It says, joins them approached and just began traveling with them. So two were discussing all about Jesus, then Jesus just joins them, jumps right in. But verse 16 says, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. So they had no clue that this was Jesus. And Jesus then asked, what are you guys talking about? What's up? Well, what are we What are we discussing? And they, um, it says one of them says, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem and unaware of the things which have happened here in these days? So they're saying, are you kidding me? You don't know about these things. What's going on? You, you must be the only one not talking about what is going on. And they kind of laid this out briefly and said the things about Jesus, the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word in the sight of God. Then explaining the chief priests and rulers delivered him to the sentence of death and crucified him. Then in verse 21, but we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, it is the third day since these things happened. So they're saying this one came. He was great and mighty and deed was in submission to his father that he came, spoke these things, did these things. And we were hopeful that he would be the one to redeem Israel, but that the chief priest led him away to be crucified. Then they continued in verse 22, but also... Some women among us amazed us when they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Then they continue in saying some of them went there in the tombs, but they didn't see him. So it's almost like how they were relaying this to Jesus. It was almost like we wanted to believe we were hopeful. You know, people are talking, but we just don't know if it's true. We're just not sure what's going on, but here's the talk and here's what's going down. And so they just kind of speak this to Jesus. Again, not aware that this is Jesus. Verse 25, and he said to them, oh, foolish men and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? So Jesus relaying this message really hit on this, um, this being discouraged, this not believing, this losing hope in all of this, that in all that these men were talking to him about, Jesus really um, really hit on their emotions, on what they were feeling, on not just the words they were speaking, but on how it was affecting them. Just such a personal, a personal God we serve. Jesus really listening and hitting that, taking it deeper. Jesus was so intentional in all of his conversations and listening to these men speak. He, again, just not the words, 
he took it deeper. He was more intentional about that and he hit on that. So he spoke about their disbelief, about their losing hope and saying it was necessary for Christ to suffer these things. It's what was written. It's what was written. And if you believed, if you knew, you would understand this. You, your hope would still, your head would be lifted high in all of this. That this was necessary, it says, for Christ to suffer these things, to enter into his glory. Verse 27, then beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. So he's saying, keep hope. There's, there's joy in this. Do you not know what was written? Do you not know what is now? Do you not know that there's every reason in the world for you to believe, for you to have so much hope? And Jesus began explaining it. What was written? What was said? What is to be fulfilled? What has been fulfilled? Giving them every reason in the world to see, to have their eyes open, to see, and to believe and to be brought into hope and hope itself as they were in the midst, in the presence of hope himself. Then it says they approached the village um, and he acted as though he was going further. So Jesus did, but they insisted, it says they urged him to stay with them. So they walked into their home. He went in to stay with them. It says verse 30, when he had reclined at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it. And breaking it, he began giving it to them. So in this, in what took place at the Last Supper, in the intimacy there, in just reclining at the table, breaking bread, then after this, after they see him do this in, in their home as he um, agreed to stay with them, verse 31 says, Then their eyes were opened. And they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. So when they were aware of who they had been talking to, who just taught them so much, who was staying with them, who came in and was breaking bread with them, their eyes were open. They recognized it was him. And then just like that, he vanished. Verse 32, they said to one another, were not our hearts burning within us? Well, he was speaking to us on the road. Well, he was explaining the scriptures to us. I love this. I love this. We're not our hearts burning within us as he was speaking to us on the road. May we recognize, may we recognize what causes this burning to happen within us. When we just feel like our hearts are going to explode, may we know that that is the Holy Spirit. May we know that that is truth being stirred up within us, that we are in the presence of God Almighty. When we feel that, when we feel that rush within us, deep within us, may we know, may we recognize, may we be aware that this is something so much more than just, than just the stuff of this world that it's so much more. It is divine. It's a divine encounter. It's a divine presence that we are experiencing, that we are around, that we are are in the presence of. Um, I love that. We're not our hearts burning. Just thinking like, oh my goodness, recognizing it's Jesus and thinking way back then I knew. I knew it felt different. I knew it was something more. I knew that he was something special. Love that. We're not our hearts burning within us as he was speaking to us on the road. May we, may, may his words hit that, that deeply in us. Every time he speaks to us, let's allow our hearts to just, just be ignited with that fire of the spirit of truth as he is speaking, as he is moving, as he is just being with and to us. Verse 33. And they got up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found gathered together the eleven and those who were with them, saying, The Lord has really risen and has appeared to Simon. They began to relate their experiences on the road and how he was recognized by them in the breaking of bread. So they're telling them what just happened. They're probably overwhelmed, probably blabbing a whole bunch of emotions out in this, just being absolutely amazed and saying, No, he really is. All this talk, what these women were saying, he really is risen and explaining this whole situation of him joining them and walking with them and speaking these things. Then verse 36, while they were telling these things, so while they were giving their personal accounts, he stood, um, he himself stood in their midst and said to them, peace be to you. So while they were giving their personal account, Jesus appears. 
He's standing in the midst of all of them and says, peace be to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought that they were seeing a spirit. So they were thinking, oh, he's not really alive. This is just a spirit. This is just that this is just, you know, him being dead and, and showing himself to us. But no, he was alive. He was alive. Jesus was there, alive, risen from the dead, again, in a physical body, in a physical, tangible sense, standing in their midst. Verse 38, and he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your heart? Then he says in verse 39, see my hands and my feet that it is I myself, touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. Jesus says, go ahead, touch me, taste and see how good I am, how truly alive I am standing right before you. He's saying, I'm here in, in, in the most physical sense. I'm alive. I've been risen from the dead. I'm not, I'm not appearing before you as a spirit, as one that has been dead and now I'm visiting you. No, I am here standing in your midst physically, tangibly, so that all your senses can see and hear and smell and taste and touch and, and all of these things. I say taste, but that was weird because he doesn't want him walking up and tasting, but in the sense of just tasting how good he is, that how physical and, and present he is with them right then and there. Okay, verse 40. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. He showed them the marks. He showed them the scars that he had, that he has because of love, that these scars scream love to them, scream power to them standing in their midst. Verse 41, while they still could not believe it because of their joy and amazement, they were just so overwhelmed with what, what is going on with him being right before them. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? So as they're still kind of doubting, they're still like, wait, this can't be right. Am I just imagining? Am I dreaming? Then verse 42, they gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it before them. He was alive eating with them in the most just simple, practical, real, physical kind of way, he just sat down and started eating with them, really hitting on, nailing on every single one of their doubts. Verse 44, now he said to them, these are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Jesus is saying, I spoke these words to you. These are my words, which I spoke to you while I was still with you. While I was dwelling among you, walking and talking among you, as you followed after me, I spoke these words. And in everything I spoke and everything you heard me speak, they will be fulfilled. Everything spoken about me, everything written about me, everything I spoke to you about myself, written in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, they will be fulfilled. They must be fulfilled. Verse 45, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, that he brought to light what he had already spoken to them. May he open our minds to the truth we have already heard, yet have not fully understood. But our time with the Lord, spending with him, seeking him out, continuing our pursuit in him, just walking Every day, this practical everyday stuff out with the Lord, it brings about that revelation. It brings about that understanding of the words that he has spoken to us. But in every word that he speaks to us, may we hide it in our hearts. May we hold on to it, even if we don't understand at the time it was spoken. We've got to say, I don't know what this means. I don't know what this is, but I know, I know that he spoke this to me. I know that he's speaking this. I know that he is giving me a glimpse of this. I don't know what it means or where it's gonna lead me, but I'm holding fast to it. And I'm gonna hold on to it. I will not let it go until it is revealed, until he takes me deeper into this. Because what he speaks, it will be fulfilled. What he speaks, even when we don't understand it, it's going to be fulfilled. So may we cling to him. May we treasure and hide his words in our heart so that when in his perfect timing it is revealed that we're right there. We're seeing, we're receiving, we're believing, and, and we're just right there with him in his presence. 
Okay, verse 46, so he continues, and he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead the third day. So he's saying, just as it was written, it is fulfilled, and here I am. Then he continues in verse 47, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem, screaming salvation. Jesus said what was written, it will be fulfilled. And these things have been fulfilled. I was crucified. I have been risen. I am standing before you, but it doesn't stop with this. There's more in this. In, in what was fulfilled in, in my death, in my resurrection, this means something for you. There's more in this. This is just the beginning. And Jesus screaming, this is salvation. This screams the repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations that this will happen, this will be fulfilled. And Jesus is saying, and it starts with you speaking this, believing this, receiving this, and carrying this on to all the nations, to all the world. Verse 48, you are witnesses of these things. It's gonna start with you. Jesus is charging them out. Hold fast to my words. Hold fast and know that there is a fulfillment in this. You are witnesses of these things. Verse 49, and behold, I am sending forth the promise of my father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. I'm sending forth the promise of my father upon you. This is the Holy Spirit, this power that's going to come upon you, but you are to stay in the city. Stay here until you are clothed with this power this power from on high. I love this choice of words, clothed, until you are clothed with it. So looking up that word, the original translation, the, the original um, word or, or definition of this Greek word, clothed, means in the sense of sinking into a garment. To be clothed with it, you sink into it. Just this this, this comfort, this belonging, this, this is meant to be, this is what's intended, this is purpose, this has been established, it's a perfect fit, clothed with this power, that, that, that it is purposed. It was purposed from the beginning of time for the Holy Spirit to come and clothe us with who he is, with his power, and sending us out, that we feel comfortable in it. It was meant to be. That is why we were created, to be with that, in that kind of relationship, with that kind of connection, walking out with that kind of power, just leading us on clothed. Stay here. Jesus says, stay here. Don't get up and leave. Don't spread out. Don't go, don't go running with, you know, like all hyped up and okay, I'm ready. Let's do this. We've got to understand that there, there is got to be this, this training, this seeing, this being empowered, this being risen up, this, this being connected. That connection with the Lord has got to be real before we go running out. Like I remember right when I got saved. As a baby Christian, I was like, yes, I want to change the world. I want to, I want to share all this. I want to, I want to give my testimony. I want all this. And I just went out and it was, we've got to see the danger in that where when we're a Christian, we've got to do everything we can and just running towards the Lord. We've got to know his word. We've got to stand on it, learn it, be developed, be trained in it. We've got to connect with Father more than ever before. And in this, Jesus is saying, you've got to make that connection. Don't you dare go anywhere. I'm purposing this for you to go and preach the gospel to the nations, go being sent out. But Jesus in this time says, stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Stay here until that power, until the Holy Spirit comes upon you because you're going to need this power until you are clothed with power from on high. Verse 50, and he led them out as far as Bethany and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they, after worshiping him, returned to Jerusalem with great joy, hiding his words in their heart. And it says they were continually in the temple praising God. Yes, so beautiful. So much of this charge, so much of this, I mean, Jesus appearing before them and speaking all of this of what is to come, of what has been fulfilled, of that this is just the beginning. 
It's, it's, they're just getting started. Jesus is just prepping them, preparing them, loving on them, speaking this life into them. So much going on. So much of the power of God. So much of the power of God being passed on to them, to us. And again, this stay in the city until you've been clothed with a power from above, from on high. Beautiful. Yes, thanks so much for walking this out with me. Again, our next video will be our very last video of finishing up the Gospels of all four of the first books of the New Testament. So I'm so excited. All of this that, that the Lord has shown us and revealed to us in um, what I feel like this short amount of time. So there's so much more ahead. There's so much more to see and to learn and to grow in. So let's do that very thing. Let's keep going after him, doing this all with purpose, trusting him, believing him accepting, receiving all of this and letting it be stored up, hidden deep in our hearts as we connect with the Lord, being empowered to go and to preach the gospel and to make disciples and to train up and just to do life with the body of Christ after and only after that connection is made and made real, made in the most real, practical, personal, intimate kind of way with us and God, with you and the Lord, with me and the Lord, that connection has to happen first for there to be the most effective, most powerful kind of, of living there is. Okay. Thanks so much for walking this out with me. I'll see you soon on my next video as we hit the last two chapters of the book of John and finishing up these gospels. Cannot wait. God's going to be so glorified. He is, and we're going to keep learning and growing. So yes, see you soon.